welcome to our final episode of the diplomats that covers the season five nexus finals brought to you by diplomacybriefing.com where you can get all the latest updates on diplomacy it's for free uh i'm joined here by badger and skinny pete and we're going to be talking about 1910. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that reference is so bad watch breaking bad you got uh, and skinny pete uh right. anyways we're here to talk about the the last season <laughs> The fantastic great Germany gets, and whatever else my fellow commentators, audacious hand and superstition heart, want to talk about. Boys, how are you doing tonight? Good. Not bad. I feel like I went through the finals with this podcast. I know. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't. I mean, uh, well, Audacious Hand, it was a little anticlimactic, wasn't it? We, we tried to get the ratings up. Yeah. I was uh, I was definitely right about uh, the 100% sociological probability. I, I didn't see it ending quite this dramatically in Germany's favor. Um, Even the dog agrees. Yeah, my dog's a little agitated by this outcome. <laughs> Well, Austria didn't win, so that's uh, bad for dogs. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, nothing really here. I mean, I guess everything was expected. Superstition at some level. Austria stuck the knife in one more time. Uh, I got the knife stuck in him one more time by Turkey, right? Right. Um, yeah. Turkey ends with six. Good fourth place finish. Yeah, no help in Brest for uh, Italy. No. Nope. In fact, he goes down one, right? Doesn't mm. even get that. Yeah, he, he's up. Yeah, he ends up six. Yeah. The triple six. Yeah, you think he'd at least jump into Belgium if he didn't have an agreement for Brest. So I really wonder if England said he would help him or not. Because. Otherwise, I would have bounced Spain and, you know, tried to bounce Brest because he can't cover both. So if he plays defensively, at least you have a shot of keeping Germany down one. He still would have won, but it would have been better than trying for, for Brest, I think. I don't know. I think it was just sort of like, take it if you want it, but, you know, I can't win unless you do this, so help. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, England just looks like he just, gunboated at the end um i mean he took norway and spain which just lets germany win why even take norway um yeah i don't know well and, and then the the war i mean you know i guess germany ended up being italy's friend i mean Ger i mean england ended up being germany's friend you can't look at this any other way as as England picking between two people he didn't like, and he, he picked Germany. I, I think it's more of England just wanted the best result for him and didn't really care about the outcome. He's like, they're both assholes. Let them do whatever they want. So This is where we end up center-wise. Um, it's also, if you there are some odd things if you look at the moves, though. I mean, why, why did... Uh, why did Italy break uh, the support from Tyrolia for Germany? And also, why did Germany go to Warsaw um, and tap Moscow? It's a little odd. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the Venetian move, I guess, he, he, you know, if he was going to win, he was going to try and maximize the centers. He didn't know. Well, he just, he broke the support so that Germany would for sure get an extra center. So if he wanted to win, why do that? Um, why not go for Trieste? And why did, did Germany think he was going to walk into Warsaw, perhaps? I mean, it almost looks like Germany almost gave Warsaw to uh, to Austria or something. I don't know what was going on there. 
Maybe Germany thought he was getting support. Question, could Italy have won had it decided to bounce Belgium and not tap Tyrolia? And then instead of going for Brest, bounce Spain? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Because it, Belgium would have been English. Yep. Norway would have been English. Mm. Munich would have been Austrian. Yep. So that mm. would have brought Germany down to – or. Yeah, two, because Brest would pick it up one. So it would go to a seven, and then yeah. Italy would go down Brest. Yeah, where's, the, where's Germany losing two? I'm sorry. Are you losing was, Norway? Oh, you no, it wouldn't, because Belgium doesn't count. Never mind. He's flat. Yeah. He'd, lose uh, one. He'd go down to eight, and Italy would still be at seven. Yeah, I guess, I guess Germany probably went to Warsaw because – it looks like Austria actually got him to think that he was getting a support uh, into Warsaw, and then he almost took Munich through that deception, um, except for Italy breaking the support. Um, yeah. It's a little bit of a – I mean, the last move is kind of a little bit of a microcosm of the entire game. It's just everyone failing to work together and Germany dominating. I'm really surprised uh, Germany didn't double support Russia instead. Yeah, I mean, just to I make Austria really had much of a shot, but yeah, it's odd. Or, or he didn't support Munich. Yeah, well, that's why I think I think he thought that Austria would support him into Warsaw, and Austria lied and tried to take Munich. That's what it looks like to me. Is Conk the true hero of 1910? He's the true villain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. if, there, if there's anyone who actually listens to this and is nerdy enough to compile all our grades for all the powers and see how they actually match onto the results, I think it would be amusing to see Conk's grade as fourth place, but average A who even knows how many pluses that has given him over the years. Um, we're just absolute fools, but <laughs> it's a valid Victorian that amounted to nothing. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, here's the final center count with the uh, tied for second, but formally fourth, uh, given his order in the pecking list. Uh, Austria and Italy deservedly. I uh, finish four centers behind. Yeah, Italy was the closest. They could have ended up with seven to Germany's eight, but mm -hmm. it wasn't close enough. He had to pick up Trieste Greece. If he had pulled Greece last season instead of giving it to Turkey, he at least could have held it. Um, I think the thing that I was most surprised about reading the AARs and that we'll talk about in the interviews with the players is the apparent existence, at least for a while, of the Central Alliance. Uh, and I know you're big into the Central Alliance. It's one of your things. You mean uh, Germany, Austria, and Italy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently, uh, you're not big into it, but I thought you were. Me? Oh no, yeah, no, I, I do like uh, I do like a CP. I I've had a. It's funny because when I started, I had so much good fortune actually getting that together. I, I like having the three caballeros just go just beat people up. Um, but it's difficult. There, there is also this odd. I mean, you know, Tom's not European, but there's this really strange pattern I've even found in ranked play where European Italy's always attack you as Austria. Um, bizarre. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of surprised. I haven't read that yet. I'm kind of. I don't really see how that, how that's possible, considering Austria moved to Bohemia in, in mid game to try to attack Germany and then himself was attacked by Russia and also uh, also uh, Italy attacked Austria I don't know and even if that was planned Austria then moved back and pushed him out I mean that that must have been a, an alliance in name only yeah I mean I think it started out as one 
Are you sure it wasn't a Russia, Austria, and Italy? There was that at the beginning, but uh, there was never, at least according to Village Idiot, whose interview you've not heard yet, uh, the real tension was Austria apparently told Russia he was always going to move against Germany and never would. And well, that's not true at all. Russia, Austria moved against Germany and then Russia stabbed him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about? It was like, you can listen to oh these, yeah, but it's <laughs> that was the second time. <laughs> I mean, it's it's early, right? So, uh, but yeah, I don't. I think there was a, an air uh, for a while until Austria ended it. No fast, but <laughs> then trust yeah. would be rebuilt. It, 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 but superstition is Germany a deserving winner? You've seen oh, all yeah. the. Movies. I've, I've never seen someone take the lead and just hold it with very little you know, resistance. I mean, Italy, I think, pivoted at the right moment to stop the board leader and then squandered its its ability to stop him. I think mean, he was just more afraid of the what if of England than actually taking Germany down first. And is Germany a deserving winner? Of course, of course. I mean, he made some great moves, um, mostly in the mid to late game. Uh, you know, we've talked about that big uh, kind of daisy chain of armies that swept west at the perfect moment when Italy was creeping up on him. Um, we talked about uh, his supported move to Silesia, which blocked Austria's last ditch effort. Um, he anticipated, he, he really was great at uh, like his multifold thinking, anticipating people's moves. He did very well. Um, and the winner is, I think the winner of a, the winner of a diplomacy game is always deserving. I don't think that there is anything that could happen that would make a winner undeserving. One, I agree with you, but two, his greatest asset for sure was being the least hated <laughs> of, the, of the largest powers. I mean, England yeah, hated for, him for sure, like to an extreme level. But mm -hmm. other than that, he was fairly unhated. I mean, England to me played very robotically. Like he didn't actually hate. I mean, if he had, if England had hated him, he could have swung the game. Yeah. Um, I don't think England hated anybody. Or if he did, he hated everyone equally. So mm -hmm. nothing mattered. He's just going to play his game. I was like a robot. I was just like, I'm just going to do what's best for this move, regardless of the game's ending. But. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Germany didn't rub it in or create too much animosity. It's just the way he plays. So. And that might have been part of Germany's, you know, when he Germany had that mid-game stab, which actually kind of is a lesson for me in finals play. To me, like a two-center stab is, never, is not worth it. But perhaps in a finals game with the quality of players you have, that might be the best stab you're going to get no matter when in the game it is. So... It might actually be worth it in a finals game. Um, and he might have actually evaluated England, profiled him as someone who doesn't have that that passion to really like rip into him for what he's done, you know. Um, sometimes you you real you some people you know if you stab them that they will not relent and they will like lock their jaws onto you. Um, he might have known that England would not be that in the end. Um, I will say it's funny because we talked a lot about game throwing and we kind of like to joke about Conk, who actually ended up really, I think, playing for the center count. Um, for sure. If someone threw this game, it was Russia throwing it for Germany. Because Russia could have broken the support from St. Petersburg at multiple times. Russia did everything, just committed his entire uh, being to kind of stop to slowing Austria down. Um, uh, yeah, Aust I think Russia was the one one player who actually did play resentfully. Um, I'm not sure what Russia owed to England. And he owed his survival to Germany. Nothing. Well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. He was hate playing. He, you know, if you, you know, I don't even like the term game, game throwing has I don't think he threw the game to Germany, but I, I don't he think he kind of 
did. I don't know if Germany could have won this without Russia's un absolutely unwavering support right down to, you know. I don't um, think Russia like, had a choice. Hmm? I don't think Russia had much of a choice. Well, I mean, we'll see. Really what approach, so it just had to defend its home center the best it can. Well, I mean, we could see, we'll see what happens. I mean, diplomatically, I, I, have, I have a feeling he just uh, – sulked and was like i'm helping germany i don't think he probably really tried very hard after his second attempt to lead an attack on germany fight austria i think it's very clear that that's where he picked his battle right was, right i'm not i'm not making any kind of moral judgment i'm just saying that like his he his absolute devotion to germany after his second attempted attack on germany really did um pave the way for a german victory in a lot of ways um he's I the think, one who acted yeah i think germany did a really good job i think the main problems were uh austria not finishing turkey and italy stabbing england way too soon uh, uh yeah I, I actually think that the number one reason why this board ended up as it did was uh conflict uh, with ai too early yes and ultimately the turn came too soon they, they stabbed, Austria stabbed Italy with three centers in Turkey. Clearly, Turkey had to be a little more dead for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all those things are interlinked. I mean, it's just Austria and Italy just never could get it together. Um, you know, in order for them to, if they had, if they had peacefully partitioned the Ottoman Empire, they could have done something if they had acted in concert against Germany. They could have done something. It's like we said a while back. Uh, they could have formed an alliance in which they said, "Well, one of us will win rather than neither of us," and that never happened. Um, but even, Italy, like, I mean, even not working together, when when Italy and England were working together, they pretty much had Germany out of France. They could have taken Belgium and pushed further into Germany, yes, and yes. Germany would have definitely lost this game. Um, it's just it didn't happen. Italy stabbed way too soon and gave Italy or gave Germany the advantage. Um, the only reason Austria—I mean, Austria didn't really need to care about Germany or Italy. It could have had all those centers. What do you, what do you think about Italy's point in his AAR? And then I'll ask you. He, he made two points. This is the first point he made. One, it was really clear that I couldn't win unless I had more units. And the only way to get that was through England. And I essentially counted on England hating Germany more than me once England saw that I had to do what I did. That was the reason why he said he stabbed. It was the only chance he had. He basically carried him as long as he could. Couldn't do it anymore and needed to try and pick up stuff. Um, well, let me just also address what Stitch just said. I mean, with, I actually think it, Italy's problem started earlier. Um, I actually don't think, I think that paradoxically, if he had not shown his cards against Germany so early by moving to Burgundy and move, starting to move the armies into France, and instead had taken the Mid-Atlantic, had pushed his fleets forward, and he could have filled stuff in later, um, like if he could have gotten some kind of raiding fleets farther in, picked some, maybe even picked some centers off of England, kind of had a half-hearted alliance with Germany. I mean, what happened was he went for Germany. And this is, again, I actually, you know, I'm really going to stick to my point that Russia did have a lot to do with this German victory. Russia let France die. Russia had a winter green and didn't help Italy at all. Um, you know, and, and Italy kind of way deep, way back. I was <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. But 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 it's a cascade. It's actually a little things are what cause these victories. I mean, even France, in their death, in their dying uh, moments, right, keeping Italy out of Brest uh, by breaking that support from Gascony. Um, you know, I I, I really think that sometimes it's the little details that matter. Italy, the fact that they they could have taken the Mid-Atlantic much earlier. They could have pushed fleets forward. They should have kept Germany somewhat on side and not committed until they knew Russia would also help them, especially when Russia had a history of never helping anyone 
you know, they I, watched France die. I just disagree. Yeah. I, I think Italy had to. Um, England was down to four centers. Germany was in way better of a position. Germany would have picked up those English shots way faster if Italy didn't do anything. Um, mm. Yeah. I just, I mean, way, way before when it could take the Mid Atlantic and push its way up when France was still alive, it could have cre crept up slowly. But, um, I just, I just think that at that time, it really needed to prop England up. Well, I think, I think they should, he should have stuck with France and crept up on England and surrounded Germany a little more. Um, let, let Russia take the heat. Um, kept Germ, I mean Austria on side. I just think Italy. There was a time when Italy. I haven't read the AR, but there was a time when Italy move wise was the least had built up maybe the least bad blood with people. He had one fleet in Greece and was kind of like holding off the kind of squabbling East with that one fleet. Um, I think he could have done more to scavenge without making enemies um, and then put himself in a better position. I also think it, he wasted the position in the English channel just too many times. Um, like you mentioned that too, like so many times they could have taken Belgium and didn't, um, I really think his, I think his fleet, his downfall was his fleet play in the West. I'm, you're harder in Italy, but had he taken Greece instead of Turkey, which he could have done by himself, and yeah. bounce Belgium and bounce Spain and not tap Tyrolia, he would have won. That's it. I mean, he didn't do a bad job. He just, yeah. he just well, missed one, one play a couple seasons ago. Well, according to Village Idiot, and this is he echoes what Otto says. Italy was an incredibly hardworking player and constantly worked worked the press at a very high rate, but it apparently engaged in uh, too much deception. And then they internally, the other powers, made fun of Italy, calling Italy's attempt at swerving people tomfoolery. Uh, and, you know, and they would share Italy's press and they would say more tomfoolery. And I mean, that they're, mm. you know, they're... but well, I... go ahead. I, I, who, I wonder who came up with that term. That's just uh, that's just a, that's just diplomacy, right? You make someone else hated, you, you demonize someone else. I don't think that's as much Tom as whoever made up, actually coming up <laughs> Wow, it sounds very similar to what what we kind of did to Tom in our in our game stitches, calling him POS. Uh, and, we yeah. Me, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Just that sounds out very way. familiar, but yeah, I mean, making you know, making up an insulting nickname for someone, demonizing someone. I wonder where that came from. Um, I, that might come through in the other interviews. Um, it, it might. And the other thing is, uh, Village Idiot did agree with you that he he was trying to help Germany win. And uh, yeah. he wanted me to tell you that while he didn't have a cellar of resentment, he had a pantry of pet pettiness towards mm -hmm. Austria. And, uh, you know, that you basically psychologically nailed that he wanted his narrative to prevail. Yeah. Uh, but I thought Italy made another good, interesting point. I don't know if it's a good point or a right point. The village idiot strenuously disagreed with it, but I would, that doesn't mean you have to disagree with it. Italy in his AAR talked about Austria's initial stab, saying he was very happy about it, saying he knew he could get back, protect the boot, but he also knew that he would get a lot of help against Austria at that moment because people would be worried about early leader syndrome. And he felt the first person to go up big would draw everyone else's ire. Uh, Village Idiot was like, N I don't think that's, I think that's like post after the fact rationalization. He was super right. mad at the time. But, uh, you know, we weren't in the game, but do you think there's anything to that? There, I think there is an issue of early leader syndrome where people do gang up on the leader sometimes. I think logically that makes sense looking back at it. Or even in the moment, you can be logical and say, hey, this makes sense. Everyone's going to rally to your defense. But on the other hand, I don't know any player that's going to be like, oh, yeah, I got attacked. And, you know, someone like France is going to be like, hey, yeah, someone's in Gascony. No, not everyone's going to be upset that they're getting attacked. 
they might be someone else might be excited that you know Italy is under attack and that early leader syndrome might happen. Um, but I don't know if the person being attacked can be all that excited about it. Um, that might just be the silver lining. All right. I mean, let's go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I mean, like him taking Trieste in the beginning was good for him in that, you know, there's even a variant of diplomacy, if I recall, where they give Italy two fleets and one army to even things out. Um, is, am I right about that? Pretty sure. Yeah, that it's, common. it's pretty calm. It's an easy variant. It's, that's the only thing it changes. The Rome right. has a yeah. And so like by taking Trieste, even if you lose it, you get to convert an army into two fleets. It is somewhat beneficial. It's the only thing is like it's just why in finals play I'm just it's just sad that we still haven't really seen an Austro-Italian alliance. It's just such a dynamic, powerful alliance. Um, and I think like the story of this of their loss is their failure to work together. I don't see any benefit in the fact that they couldn't get it together. Um, I mean, look at the map. The East never resolved. Yeah. Um, it's about to. <laughs> Turkey is about to. Sweet that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. Let's let's do something that we've traditionally done on the diplomats on the Nexus finals. Kind of explain where they think each power went wrong. So where did Turkey go wrong, if at all, this game? Uh well, they just couldn't make an ally. They got attacked by three people and they never really converted uh they never really converted uh that into any sort of alliance um honestly I, I, where he went wrong is picking turkey in the first place he knows that he's a big target and especially in nexus play it really seems that keeping turkey in the corner is very popular uh, only i know it's very hard for turkey to win Unless you're power. He wasn't going to pick Italy a third time. His only options were really Austria or Turkey. I would have picked Austria, but... I think he should have picked Austria. He has the chops for it, and he has the strategy for it. There's almost, only so much strategy you can do around Turkey. Um, everyone's... I don't know. Every finals, it just seems like nobody wants to let Turkey out. I think he did a great recovery, but I think his biggest problem was he picked Turkey. <laughs> he knows better. Uh, I know he didn't want Italy again, but uh, I think he, it was good. I, I, think now, I so. him for Turkey. Turkey's a solo threat if he's out of the box. Yep. Uh, Conks have, you know, always looked for the solo. I think he picked the right country for him, but he's crippled by his uh, by his nature. The very thing that makes him so that do that do so well in the preliminary rounds makes him so feared which is probably why Turkey was a bad country in the finals. But ultimately, it's a diplomatic failure. I can't really point to any tactical. No. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, like, Villagidi is a great player. I'm sure he's played a lot of amazing games. But he just, I don't know what was going on, but from the very beginning, Russia seemed absolutely determined to screw him over for no benefit to himself is how I read this. His, his point was... An RT ultimately works to the advantage of T, which what? is not, that's not true at all. I don't that's know where it is. All right, well you can read yeah. an AAR to his interview or, or interview him, but I'm telling yeah. you what he said. I'm not even being allowed to finish. He's like, you know, his point is he thought he would ultimately be a German par uh, a, a junior partner to Turkey in the RT. That's interesting now, just because everything I've ever read says there's way more for Russia to pick up and way more momentum because if they don't have to protect the south they can hit germany austria and solidify the north yeah i mean the, yeah the traditional outcome is is russia allies with both turkey and italy and then once austria which is the biggest threat is neutralized then you just kind of side with italy or turkey whoever's weaker yep. um, all right uh, yeah. Well, you pivoted to Russia. Russia's biggest mistake then was not aligning with Turkey. And Russia's biggest mistake was just never, oh, huh? He was an ally. He didn't ally France. He didn't ally Italy. He didn't ally Turkey. Um, I really like his play style when I played with him. 
because it was quite devious that he moved slowly mm -hmm. enough for everyone else to get dirty hands and then he just cleaned up and he yeah. started that way and it impressed me because it infuriated me <laughs> because i remember it gave me flashbacks when he won um but it didn't work for him this time it ended up where he waited so long he had to stab his ally and that's that was just a misfortunate uh, event that I'm sure doesn't usually happen for him, but in this finals, with this Austria being as aggressive uh, as it is, it just wasn't a good good uh, strategy at all. Let Germany get out of control, let Austria get out of control, and wouldn't help anyone to keep him under control until he was on the ropes himself. So, kind of yeah. like isolationism. You just watch Germany invade everyone, you're like, they won't invade me, and then they come yeah. <laughs> a bit of historical precedent right yeah. i mean you know what's an interesting thought experiment is what if uh, village idiot and conquer reversed um i think russia is just that style you're talking about it doesn't really work russia to me you have to be proactive and just kind of grow like well, just steadily from the beginning it like village idiot style the way he played the game would have been great if he was turkey you know, when we played yeah, the fundraising game he was russia and it worked great really? but i yeah. want well, in this game in this game the way they each played this game i feel like if their roles had been reversed it might have been a really different outcome um but yeah i mean the biggest thing from the beginning right i think russia and france to me are are interlinked geopolitically um it's kind of interesting because they can be a push and pull relationship where you're kind of demonizing each other. You're trying to turn everyone towards the other one, but at the same time, you, you both need each other, and you can't you can't let each other just go down, at least not too fast. And the fact that you just watched you just watched France get drawn and quartered and did nothing. Yeah. I was the 1902, 1903 when he saw that EG was solidly against or against France. He should have at least moved Warsaw to Silesia to, to pull some pressure. That yeah, would have done yeah. wonders. From his perspective, and our, look, I mean, you should listen to the interview. From his perspective, he had four fleets on St. Petersburg, and he didn't lose it for a long time because he wasn't doing that. In other words, you know, his failure to engage kept him alive in the north. He's like, well, what was I going to do? And, I mean, he'll. I think his biggest failure is obviously the failure to get tempo, which he never did. Yeah, but he should have known St. Petersburg was lost anyways. He had already lost momentum. Uh, they had no armies up there, so he would have lost it to a fleet. So at least giving France some breathing room. I mean, one army in Silesia does a lot to I uh, mean, threaten Germany. Does he have amnesia about the time where Austria w went to attack Germany and then he stabbed him twice? Like, did he address that at all, or is oh, this yeah. just... We've gone over in detail, so you should listen. It's a... Well, Okay, the uh, uh, we we got to hurry it up a little bit, but Austria, Austria's greatest failure. Where where did it go wrong? Not finishing Turkey. Got to be the greatest failure. All those dots, it was pretty much his. Uh, the Russian dots are pretty much fool's gold, to me. Um, I mean, yeah, they're not finishing turkey but to me like these things are interlinked we're basically saying the same thing but i would place the emphasis on not getting on the same page as italy which is what you need to do to finish turkey you can't actually break turkey without italy really um i also think the, the early move to bohemia was pretty yeah. terrible attacking germany was a big mistake yeah no you don't attack all three of your eastern ally or eastern neighbors yeah. why are you going for germany <laughs> Yeah, so there was that. Um, yeah, he should. All those were failures. I think they could have been overcome. The biggest tactical failure was supporting Tyroli into Venice in 08. Um, that was bad in that he didn't follow into Tyroli. Yes, that was pretty bad. But I do think I do think the early move. If you're gonna just come and bring it down to one move, and I was like. Like, for instance, for me, if I was going to do Italy's one move that he failed is not getting the Mid-Atlantic early. Um, if I was going to do Austria's one move, it was moving into Bohemia early. Bohemia is just a tile 
so it's almost like North Africa or something. Like you just don't take that early in the game. That's, that's break a stalemate. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that that would be his biggest single move failure. Okay, you said Italy's biggest failure failure to take the Mid Atlantic. Uh, Keith. Oh, I, I think it's just not taking Greece because you actually could have won if he had taken Greece. So, yeah. I think he could have had that back. I don't know why you would help Turkey in there. Uh, I think uh, that, that would be his one move. But I stabbing him one move, that's not failure, bad. Hard to know what was worse the diplomatic failures or the, the building of the fleet instead of the army to protect Venice. That was bad. Yeah, I okay. forgot about that. That was pretty bad. But he but that was – he just shouldn't have taken – the stand of the fleet in the east instead of keeping Portugal, which would have yeah. given him more leverage over there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, did France have a biggest failure, or is it just failure to go to the channel in spring of 01? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he wanted that build, so. I know, but if he – you know, even as I have listened to that interview, and in his interview, if he, he seemed to have known, he he seemed to have known that England and Germany are coming for him, um, and I think he just gave in to like conventional thinking, and and all his other moves were really good tactically, but yeah, you you I think he should he should have moved to the Channel in 01. I guess it's just diplomatic, not being able to find a friend, which as a world champion, that's going to be hard to do. So. Okay, yeah. England's biggest failure. I guess not seeing that there was a stab available and then being able to tell people why not to stab him. Because <laughs> he was just a, a voodoo doll. Just stuck over and over. Felt so bad for him. You know, oddly enough, for a player that I, I criticized quite a lot, I can't really put my finger on a single move that was terrible, um, that really changed the game. Uh, I mean, it really depends. Like, a lot of the – in both his alliance with Germany and with Italy, there was a lot of kind of wasted moves. Um, but I don't really know who was behind that. Um, well, the answer is – England's biggest failure was his trusting nature. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's not that bad to trust, but at the same time, if you're in that position, you need to reinforce uh, why you're a better ally and why you're not worth stabbing at this moment. Um, and I'll well, articulate that. You know, actually, now that I think about it, it was there was a moment where he could have, when they were pressing. Uh, Russia and England was actually the one who was too paranoid to actually go into Russia when he could have if I'm if I recall I think that might be the kind of like I think the problem with Italy is that this is purely a board read I could be completely off but I think the problem with with England is that he always seemed to kind of drag his feet too much it was both his trusting his nature but his he he couldn't trust enough either right he couldn't trust enough to like roll the dice to get that big grab that england needs to get to get kind of into the standings um and are you in a japanese massage parlor right now <laughs> <laughs> i am oh <laughs> uh, no this is just my tea my tea room i guess okay. that's how diplomatically i would say belgium frustrated me the most there are so many times him and Italy together could have taken Belgium. Yeah. Game for both of them. Yeah. Um, it was Having good. seen the way the game unfolded, which power would you have wanted to play? If you could have inserted yourself into one power on this board. I still think Italy was the most fun to play the entire game. I just loved it. I would have loved to have played Tom's Italy and just changed a few things. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so many options and variety. Uh, and like I said, he came close to winning. He could have uh, in yeah. retro without very, very few tweaks to what he had originally done. But that's just me. I like Italy. Germany, I hate Germany. It's my least favorite power to play. 
I uh, I actually really like playing Germany and Germany won, but I mean, one of the impressive way things with Germany, usually when he, I, I feel like usually when Germany wins, they, they manage to grab a corner somewhere like um, usually uh, the Northeast. Mm -hmm. um, I will say though, I, I would have to say Italy too, especially at the juncture where he had Iberia and where he could have just England went to Portugal and he could have just swept in the mid Atlantic. That's like the, one of the best feelings in diplomacy to me is when you, someone just flies into the Portuguese chicken coop and you just, you know, taste that the, the, the air of the Atlantic, you know, the breeze of the ocean, open ocean. And you know, that like the possibilities are endless. Um, but uh, I mean, it's hard to not just pick Germany because it's fun to win. What? Well, <laughs> well, look, I think I would have picked Germany uh, because you've got a clear defined shiny object threat of France. So you can get England committed against them who's you know, a little bit inexperienced and, and you got a Russia and an Austria committed anti-Turkish. So yeah. that's a good position to be in in this game. But having said all that, I think I would have played a better England than this England. A little inexperienced. I think Germany had so committed west and towards Doc, but he only built fleets. He had no armies, couldn't make this, you know, couldn't get a stab done. But I think if I were to be inserted into this game, I would have wanted England. Get Germany focused on France. Italy wasn't a big threat early. Yeah. Germany to Russia, stab in from behind. Early. <laughs> I see what you mean. Is that kind of interesting? I almost, I mean, we don't have time for this, but I almost feel like this question, if we were really going to go into it, would be, you could almost go like year by year and be like, where, who you want to be? Because there was that moment when England got the boots on the ground in Belgium at the beginning, if you recall. Yep. And that moment, when England, when you get that army on the continent, the, there are a lot of possibilities there. Like if he had kind of maybe been more flexible there that at that particular moment right at the beginning England would have been a good pick I mean I also say when Austria convoyed twice across the Mediterranean that at that moment I wouldn't I would have liked to be Austria too um, okay but it is true. Uh, I officially what grade do you award Germany superstition that's tough um I guess he won so it's an A um, he did what he needed to do. A lot of the tactics were there. There wasn't a lot of flashy moves other than the big, sh uh, the Western shuffle. Uh, but uh, yeah, he kept uh, everyone from allying. He didn't make enough enemies for anyone to want to throw. So yeah, great job, eh? Um. Well, I award Germany the lamentations of his enemy's woman, the wind in his hair. Um, you know, I I just placed the golden crown upon his head um, and upon that crown is just a shining A studded in rubies. Germany gets the A quintuple plus with bold <laughs> underscore underlined in uh, Helvetica font with an additional couple of uh, plus signs, dollar signs, and number signs, and a few at signs. And nice. just, uh, you know, he won. And not only that, but for five years to be the leader in a finals game, yeah. to not get really a lot of respect uh, because everyone thought he would be taken out. And to, to face all comers, keep Russia on side, to, to, to do everything you could against England and Italy for as long as he did, Props. A deserving if he had winner. two people against him, he could have been taken down, but he just no one could get it together. You know, I have to say, I think, I mean, it depends if you count Powers' two victories as one or one two. So it would be the second or third most dominant victory. Um, Power, I give the one two because he had the he had one victory where everybody attacked him. Yeah, and he won, and then he had the victory where nobody attacked him. 
nobody attacked him and he was just turkey and he just everyone was a fly on his windshield so i give him the one two the win with with style is the victim and the win with style is just the steamroller um but yeah like taking the lead early mid game holding on to it ending up with quite a quite a big margin over his enemies that's probably yeah that's got to be like the second or depending on how you count that the second or third most dominant performance in nexus history Oh, I, I thought it was excellent performance. Okay, anything else you want to say about our finals game that hasn't been said in our more than 10 hours of, 20 hours of coverage? Has a diplomacy game ever been analyzed as much as this one in history? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been on this podcast before. I don't know how, if you got, how you guys analyzed previous seasons. So, But yeah, it's been... We've definitely like gone over it with a fine tooth comb and picked out all the ticks and fleas. Um, I guess my final thoughts would be astounding army play, really fun drama between the players, and just like trash fleet play, just fleets crawling along the coasts um, with their like engines broken all game. You've un- you've unlocked some of your dungeons of resentment uh, in this game against Russia against army play against me it's all coming <laughs> out tonight superstition any final thoughts no i think we've said it all i think we've yeah. said it all. great congratulations germany we will officially shut the fuck up now <laughs> <laughs> all right germany, hey, I, I beat him in the qualifier at least that's all that matters you deserved it <laughs> thank you for uh giving us a great game to all our players thanks to diplomacybriefing.com Thanks to my erstwhile colleagues here, audacious hand, audacious hand, sorry, and superstition. Uh, that Cindy Brady lisp comes in every once in a while. But nevertheless, thanks so much, guys, and good night. And thanks, players. Thanks, guys, for a great game. <laughs>